losses, but it won't be easy today on the road at Minnesota in front of another full house of Gopher fans. There will be plenty of red in the crowd, though, as the Huskers and Gophers renew a rivalry that started all the way back in 1900. In the 40s, Minnesota dominated, winning every game that decade, including 54-0 in 1943. It was a different story as we moved from color to black and white with Nebraska winning 16 straight. But then Jerry Kill has flipped the script, and the Gophers are looking for their first three-game winning streak over the Cornhuskers since 1954. The thermometer says we should expect old school smash mouth football and that is what we are expecting as the 4 and 2 Minnesota Gophers host the 2 and 4 Nebraska Cornhuskers and in year 1 of the Mike Riley era Snake Pit is the chap title of the chapter all four losses in the final minute of the game they are four minutes away from being 6-0, and but the record says 2-4. and four. And Jerry Kill, he told us yesterday, you know when the big end comes to town. He and the Gophers looking for their first three-game winning streak over Nebraska since 1954. And they are very successful in this stadium, and they are expecting another full house. Minnesota won the coin toss, and the Gophers will receive the kick from Brown, May, and Myrick. And Myrick lets it bounce for a touchback, which is where the Gophers will start things off at the 25. I'm Eamon McEnany, happy to be joined by the former Notre Dame linebacker, Rocky Boyman. And the Gophers have a veteran running the offense. Yeah, they do. Mitch Leidner. Now, he was really helped last week because Minnesota got back to their identity of being a running team. But I think this fan base here in Minnesota would like to see their quarterback give them a little bit more. And Nebraska defensively very good at stopping the run. He's going to have to be key today. They cannot just rely solely Solely on the run game. Jerry Kill telling us yesterday the play action play will be key as he knows Nebraska is going to load up to stop the run. It starts with Rodney Smith in the backfield. The redshirt freshman bounces to the outside and then pushed back by Josh Kalou. Gain of two for the redshirt freshman out of Jonesboro, Georgia, who was a bit under the weather and took a back seat to Shannon Brooks, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. But again, Jerry Kill telling us yesterday third down will be key, so they want to make it third and manageable here on second and eight. Two backs now. High snap. Lightner keeps it. Gets to the 30. Welcome to TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Minnesota with a 4-2 and two record. Hosting 2-4 and four Nebraska. I'm Eamon McEnany along with Rocky Boyman. The Gophers on the opening possession. Now with a 3rd and 5. They stick with Smith and the pistol. Trips to the left. Leidner rolls that way. Here comes pressure, dumps it off. Low and complete. K.J. May goes down to make the catch. That's a good job by Leidner rolling out to his left, which is always a tougher thing for a right-handed quarterback, but he gets a better view of the field. Doesn't quite set his feet up, but he finds the wide receiver, his best target, K.J. May. These wide receivers, I think, really got to get going here today. K.J. May, also like the tight end, Brandon Lingen. Can't be all just running. It's going to be the play action pass going to be key today. Now the fly sweep to May. Short gain. Rocky, who are your impact players when the Gophers have the ball? Well, for Nebraska, they got two big bodies on their defensive line. Vincent Valentine, he made a, reappear a reappearance last week, had a big game. And Tyler Moore, the center, a true freshman, removed his red shirt last week. He did a good job versus Purdue, Eamon, but this is a much bigger task here with this Nebraska defensive line. Nebraska, the eighth best run defense in the country. There's a look at the freshman from Texas. Now Miles Thomas in at fullback. This is Smith. He runs in to Nate Gary and goes down. And Rocky, Minnesota wants to run. Nebraska's good at stopping the run. Yeah, it's really a, a battle of both teams' strengths here. Who, we're going to see who wins here. And Nebraska also, they play this quarters defense, really stack the box, nine guys in that box for most of the time here. But 
the offensive line for Minnesota, it's kind of a ragtag group. They've been battled. I've had a lot of injuries. They need to get together here today. Chips to the right. They stay with Smith in the backfield. Nebraska bringing pressure up the middle. They get through to Leitner. And they, but he gets it off for completion. Into Nebraska territory, Drew Wolotarski beat Jonathan Rose. We see Nebraska brings the pressure, but a nice job by Leitner staying strong in the pocket, takes a shot to the chops, but still delivers an excellent seven route to the outside. There's Malik Collins getting in the face of Leitner, but the redshirt junior did a nice job delivering that football. Pick up of 24, down to the Nebraska 33. Play fake. Complete to May, and then he's brought down at the 30 by Jonathan Rose. Make that the 26, excuse me. Now we talked about Nebraska's defensive front being the eighth best in the nation, stopping the run. Their pass defense, Eamon, dead last in the country. So I think Minnesota coming in this game, yes, they want their identity of running the football, but I, they think they can get something going in the passing game. Most teams that have faced Nebraska this year have. High formation, Thomas and Smith. Eric Carter, the wide out to the right. Here's Smith, met behind the line of scrimmage, but still on his feet. Able to spin forward for a positive gain. And one time, one thing we talked about was the protection by Tyler Moore, the true freshman. And here early in the game wasn't great. Remember, this defensive front, these two big tackles, Malik Collins and Vincent Valentine, are going to be giving him heck all day. He's got to be a little bit more solid as this game goes on. So now third and one from the 24, I formation. Play fake. Looking for six. Touchdown, Gophers. Eric Carter. I just talked about the secondary for Nebraska has been a liability this entire season. And this time, Josh Kalu just loses track of the wide receiver. When that ball's in the air, he's got to have better presence and know where that wide receiver is. He lets him go, and it's a touchdown. The extra point from Santoso is good. And it wasn't all smash mouth running the football. Carter with his first touchdown catch of the year. They load up the box on third and short. The Gophers go deep. And the Gopher fans and the quarterback, Mitch Leitner, love the result. The Gophers go 75 yards in nine plays to take a 7-0 lead. Jane Slater down on the field with us, and let's check in with her. Hey, guys. Well, there has been some talk about the quarterback play of Mitch Leitner here in Minnesota as he struggled with a little bit of confidence in that passing game. Of course, he put some of those concerns to rest just here as the Gophers got up on the board. Coach Jerry Kill told me essentially he pulled Leitner aside before the Purdue game and said, look, play like you're in your backyard. Not everyone's going to like you. You've got to get used to it. He said he really saw him bounce back in that Purdue game. And, you know, there has been some talk about playing the freshman Dimry Craw, but he says, put simply, Mitch is the better quarterback right now. He knows the offense, and he's a great leader. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Jane, and a huge hit delivered on the kickoff return. By Duke McGee. Yeah, and it was just a good, solid, good football hit coming right into your living room right there. They got a little bit of contact in the head, but uh, flag doesn't come out. Minnesota wants to set the tone today. Nebraska led by Tommy, Tommy Armstrong Jr. And Rocky got off to a great start. He's struggled since. He really has. It's been, you know, he's trying to fit into this Mike Riley passing system. He's more of a get outside the pocket, dual threat running quarterback, fitting into this again, this Mike Riley system of a sit back in the pocket and go through the progressions. He needs to get better here as this season goes on. Here's Terrell Newby. Two-yard pickup. 
Talking to Coach Riley this week about the passing game, it's like it's disappeared. 21 of 59 in the two Big Ten games. What is, and one thing we constantly heard all week, Gaming, was two things. Need a limited menu, basically simplify things for Tommy Armstrong in this offense, and also give him less options in plays. In this system, there's a first route, a second route, a third option, a fourth. Maybe cut down those down a little bit, make it easier for Armstrong. Second and eight. Play fake over the middle, complete for a first down. Jordan Westerkamp. And for Nebraska, DeMornay Pearson now, he had a broken foot early in the in the offseason here, finally now getting back to full speed. He has a unique skill set they got to take advantage of. And then for Minnesota up front, they have a big guy themselves, Steven Richardson, just gives teams absolute fits at that defensive tackle position. Offense coordinator Danny Langsdorf telling us 96 is a concern, to say the least. So now first and 10 from the Nebraska 31. Newbie on the draw. He could go. The 50, the 40, the 30, the 20. Touchdown, Nebraska. 69 yards. That's why they call it execution. And I mean, there's clearly a breakdown in Minnesota's defense. There's absolutely nobody in that gap to that side. No safety at the second level either. And Newby just takes the ball, uses his speed, gets the end zone. So now Drew Brown on for the extra point to tie this thing up at seven. Just like that, the Cornhuskers and Terrell Newby with the explosive play, they answer. His fourth touchdown of the season on the ground. Nothing but green turf in front of number 34 and white. Trying to figure it out on the Gopher sidelines. Andre Campbell leading the conversation. And now the Gophers offense will get the ball back. May and Myrick back to receive. This could be returnable. And then it has some length to it, but May brings it out. Myrick brings it out anyway. Spins, still on his feet. Gets out to the 23. And a huge game a week ago against Purdue, but they swing it out to May. Gets by the first tackler, stiff arm for another couple of yards. Myerson Cockrell shoves him out of bounds, but a good gain on first down for the Gophers. I think what you're seeing is Minnesota is attacking the perimeters of the field. They want to loosen up that Nebraska front a little bit. As I said, they've stacked those nine guys in the box and think if they can get some perimeter passes, loosen those guys up a little bit, then maybe start pounding them up the middle with a run. Pick up a nine, moves it out to the 14. Stack the receivers, now motion. With Brooks. Looks like he's going to be short, so it'll be third and short. Brooks completely changed that game a week ago around in the third quarter when he went 71 yards for a touchdown. That certainly energized this Minnesota team. It did. He was a little banged up in practice this week, but uh, Coach Kill told us yesterday he will go, and boy, how electrifying was he last week. Minnesota was 3-of-3 three three on third downs on that opening drive that resulted in the touchdown. Now Brooks, they fake the fly sweep. Leidner's going to keep it, and he's going to get nowhere near it. Nebraska ready for that play. And they forced the three and out. Nate Gary coming up from the safety position along with Greg McMullen. It's going to be tough sledding if they're going to feel like they're going to chip away at that front there in between those A gaps. It looked like on the jet sweep they had Shannon Brooks had they handed the ball off to him. But there was nothing going for Leidner up the middle on that play. So after getting nine on first down, Minnesota's going to have to punt. Mornay Pearsonell back to receive. Good punt by the reigning Big Ten first team punter of the year. Does he outkick his coverage though? Into Minnesota territory. 
He's got to get by the punter. And Mortel saves a touchdown. But that is why they are fired up to have number 15 back and healthy and ready to go. And we talk about Pearsonell being a dynamic playmaker, and this is what he's done last year so well, was big time plays in the kick game. Now I think for Nebraska, if they can get this kind of production in the, in the offensive game, they'll be doing well. 41 yard return sets up Nebraska in business. I'm Eamon McEnany along with Rocky Boyman. And Rocky, take a look at that big run by Nebraska. Certainly what they needed after all the heartbreaking losses. Yeah, it really was. They, you know, they came in here, they get a punch in the mouth real quick by Minnesota. They needed to answer here in this hostile environment. And they certainly did get newbie with a touchdown. Hostile environment. There's thousands <laughs> and thousands of fans wearing red. Another full house here at TCF Bank Stadium. But now Armstrong Jr. and the Gophers in the red zone. Fullback Janovich in there, but they go to Newby. Johnson. Jonathan Celestine, the linebacker, comes up to, to the tackle for a loss. And the linebacker's job is to scrape across on this zone play, and Celestine does a fantastic job defeating the block and still keeping his outside arm free. That's the key. The left arm is still there to make the tackle. The right one's still coming off the block. Brings the running back to the turf. Minnesota not at full strength at the linebacker position. The leading tackler, Cody Pope, out for today's ball game. Now Armstrong with time. Deep. Incomplete. Great coverage by Myrick on Pearson L. You talk about Jalen Meyer. He had a fantastic game last week. Two interceptions. I thought he made a bunch of nice plays, but here he is just in perfect coverage. Has the left arm out there until the ball is delivered. And then we talk about the pocket for Armstrong. Pretty good job by this offensive line. I know Armstrong gets a lot of flack for how he's not doing a good job in the system, but it's been a variety of things, Amy. Sometimes the offensive line hasn't protected well enough for him. Sometimes the receivers have dropped footballs they shouldn't. It's not all on Tommy Armstrong. Third and 13, looking to cash in off the fumble recovery. All day. Now he's going to improvise. Looking for six. Touchdown, Nebraska. Alonzo Moore with a sliding grab. 32 yards, and that's what Armstrong does when he gets out of the pocket. And, and it's so devastating for defenses, Eamon. They don't get a lot of pressure on him, but the secondary is doing a good job of covering. But when you give this kind of time to an extending dual threat quarterback like Armstrong, at some point he's going to beat you, going to his right, throwing off the run, and just throws a dart to the wide receiver. The route comes from all the way from across the other side of the field. But only when you have that amount of time can a receiver that starts on the left side get all the way to the corner on the right to get the touchdown. The extra point from Brown is good. Alonzo Moore with his fifth touchdown reception of the season. Brown, ready to kick. This time Myra takes a knee for a touchback. So Nebraska takes the lead. Now Rodney Smith back in the backfield. I think a freshman fumbled. Wide open. Brandon Lingen, who makes the grab. That'll be a first down. And a reminder that tonight, Rocky, it's a huge SEC showdown between undefeated top 10 teams on college football presented by Hill. Dual threat quarterback Treon Harris takes over the, for the suspended Will Greer, and he leads the eighth ranked Gators against the Heisman frontrunner Leonard Fournette and the sixth ranked Tiger. Florida LSU tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Now they go to the other side, Will Tarski gets across the 40. And he, oh, thought he put it on the rug as one of the Gophers tried to pick it up. Six yard gain for Drew Will Tarski. And again, high percentage, just three step, one step kind of passes here for Matt Leidner, get him comfortable. And then at some point, Eamon, I, I really believe if they keep having success attacking the perimeter of the field, they're going to start going downhill with the run game. We saw the tight end, Brandon Lingen, being looked at on the sidelines by the trainers after the first down grab. Now Smith up the middle. Can't push the pile. 
Stopped at the 44. Let's take a look at Lingen. To the first down completion a couple of plays ago. Of course, Lingen, his first two career touchdown catches last week. Try to get a look at exactly what happened. I don't know if the defender Kalou got him on the ankle there. Is he, or maybe it looks like a shoulder maybe when he landed. If it's that elbow, shoulder on the landing, he's up. Hopefully we'll see him back on the field. Now third and two for Leidner. Smith in the backfield. Another rollout. Forced to throw early right at the sticks. This looks like he's going to be short. May makes the grab, but Josh Kalou comes up with the tackle. So now Jerry Kill with the decision to make it is 45. Leidner out there for now. Good job by Kalou breaking and tackling the receiver before he could get some yards after the catch. Kalou, remember, was beat for the touchdown earlier. Did a nice job on that play. Jerry Kill's going to play it safe. He sends out Peter Mortel. Play the field position game down by seven. Pearson L back to receive. Good kick. Pearson L lets it go and it takes a Minnesota bounce back and they will down it. At the eight, Antonio Johnson downs it. So Nebraska, with a seven-point lead, gets the ball back inside their own ten when we return. Six. Now up the middle goes Newby. That does it for a first quarter. So Minnesota struck first through the air, but then Newby went 69 yards, and then Armstrong found more. So Mike Riley's club on the road, looking to avoid a three-game losing streak to Minnesota, has the lead and the ball. Second quarter when we return to Minneapolis. Welcome back to TCF Bank Stadium. A great crowd on hand for Minnesota and Nebraska. The visitors from Lincoln lead 14-7 and Rocky several big explosive plays on them. Yeah, one, Minnesota did one thing they've not done all year, which is get a touchdown in the first quarter. The first one there goes to Eric Carr, and then Nebraska get, gets back on the board with a running game, Terrell Newby, and then it's just Armstrong creating, extending that play and finding the wide receiver in the back corner of the end zone. A little bit of back and forth here in Minnesota. He'll be already with 85 yards on six carries. Of course, it helps to have that 69-yard touchdown run. Now Armstrong in Nebraska ready for second and four. Their own 26. Setting up the wide receiver screen. Pearson L makes the first man miss and gets the first down. Pickup of four. And Rocky, talk about what a big loss that was in training camp when you combine his talents with Mike Riley's offense. It really was. Pearson L was supposed to be the Brandon Cooks of this offense, the dynamic, explosive playmaker that could just take a top off of a defense. But you can also see so good. Look, just get him the ball in space and allow him to create after that. Mark it at the 30. They go back to the I formation with Janovich and Newby. Swing it out to Moore. Still on his feet at the 35. Gets across the 40. Thrown out of bounds. Another Nebraska first down. Newby. Gets across the 45 for a short game. Brought down by Jack Lynn. Pickup of two. And all Newby so far pretty much in the running game. They had. Opened it up to running back by committee the last couple of games, but now the junior out of Los Angeles has been carrying the load. Yeah, I think he's their most versatile running back. He's good, at, obviously, in the run game. Can also catch some passes out of the backfield. Play. Eighth play of the drive. Now they get it to Newby on the screen, and this is well set up. 
Johnson does a good job to avoid the block and bring him down because that looked like he was going to go the distance. It's a nice job of mis misdirection on that play. And it's just simple things. That's what Nebraska needs to get back to. Let's not make things too complicated out there. They bring the wide receiver across, and then just leak Newby out of the backfield. Got a couple of linemen leading the way downfield. That's what, again, what these coaches talked about all week. Let's not get too complicated out there. Let's not add plays. That's not the answer. Let's take plays away, get a little bit more simple. They also say, that let's remember, we've been doing some good things out there. It hasn't been all bad. We have been moving the ball. Now first and 10 from the Minnesota 15. They give it to Moore on the fly sweep, and Myrick's ready for it. Looked like a uh, tough exchange. Loses a yard. Remember one thing Tracy Clay, the defensive coordinator for Minnesota, talked about yesterday was being better on third down. Well, how do you be better on third down? Make it a third and long. It's going to be critical for them to keep him back here on second down. The last third and long, Armstrong picked it up on the quarterback draw. Now trips to the left. That's where Armstrong starts looking. Into the end zone for Carter. He can't bring it in. Kunle Allende was able to get back and make a play, but it was in the hands of Carter. And then this ball just got a little too much air underneath it. Armstrong lofted it way too much. If he just puts it on a little bit more of a line, the receiver's going to be able to catch it. As you can see, it's coming just a little bit too much loft, and it allows the defensive back, Allende, to get back into position and knock the ball away. Allende, the walk-on, thrown into the fire this year with the injuries in the secondary, and now the Gophers trying to force a field goal. Third and 11. Newby in the backfield trips to the right. Here comes pressure. Armstrong will not get away. The Aaron Cochran with the sack, a loss of 12. And you know that has to fire up the defensive coordinator, Tracy Clay. Absolutely. Third down was the be best way to shut it down. Get your big time defensive end screaming off the edge. He beats the right tackle. On the, on the play, dips the right shoulder and is able to get to Armstrong, now forcing a long field goal. Forces a 46-yard kick. Brown coming in, four of eight from 40 or more. This is long enough, and it's good. He has hit from 49 and 50 already this year, and now he makes it a 17-7 ball game with that 46-yarder. So it was a long drive for the Cornhuskers, and they get points. Nebraska on the road, up by 10. Brown right off the field goal with another touchback as May makes the grab. So now Mitch Leidner. The good news is he's 10 for 10. The bad news is now maybe for Minnesota he's going to have to throw more because well, you're down 10. That's the thing. Minnesota wants to keep the game close because then they can really lean on that run game. They do not want to put this game into the hands of Mitch Leitner and make him win it himself. But well, Leitner has been pretty good, especially in the past game. I think it's really loosened some things up for the run game. There you see early on he finds Wolotarski and throw it on the run for the early touchdown to Carter. He's done some good things. He's a guy that's taken a lot of flack. Look, he's a hometown kid here in Minnesota, and a lot of people are not a, really a fan of his play. But look, the guy's won a lot of games around here. Off the play fit, looking deep. He overthrows. Rashad Still, the freshman out of Texas. It's hard to overthrow Rashad Still. He's six foot five, but Liner just put a little bit too much air underneath the ball. Looked like he had enough time. As you're seeing the drop back here, nice play action pass. We talked about that's going to be key, but just a little bit too far for still to get to. First incompletion of the game for Leidner. Now they give it to Smith. Short gain, it'll be third and long. Now third and seven, Leidner rolls to the right. Here comes pressure, throws off his back foot. And complete, KJ May goes down to make the grab. And you can tell, I Amen, mean, they're not super confident their offensive line can hold up versus this defensive front. So what you're seeing is they're getting Leidner outside the pocket. Malik Collins still is able to get a shot on Leidner. 
but a pretty nice throw on the run to his best wide receiver, his go-to guy, K.J. May. Taking some hits. Look, he's a tough kid. And I, again, he's not a guy that people don't want to give him a lot of credit, but he's a tough quarterback. He plays through injuries. That was a nice pass. Now the fullback, Mike Thomas. They run the reverse to May. And he gets outside for the first down. Jonathan Rose finally brought him down, but a nice stutter step move by May for a few extra yards. 12 yards on the reverse. It was a good job. They got Minnesota got Nebraska's defense looking the wrong way here. You see they're thinking the handoff's going to go to the running back Smith, and they go in with the jet sweep around the other side to K.J. May. First and 10 now from the Nebraska 48. Smith to the right of Leibniz. Off to play fit. Finding Carter. Carter inside the 30. Still on his feet at the 20. Now changes directions. Eric Carter already has a touchdown and makes an explosive play there. 31 yards. And it's not a sin to give up a 10-yard route, but it is a sin to have bad leverage on defense and allow a 10-yard gain to turn into a 25-yard gain. You see the Nebraska defensive backs turned around. They don't know where your leverage is. you got to know if you come up on the on one side, you know your safety, your cornerback is coming from the other way. That's how you keep them long games from happening. And when you and Mark Banker started speaking that special language, you defensive guys talk. That was one of the big <laughs> words, leverage. Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, trying to fix this pass defense. Now in the eye is Thomas and Smith. Wider. To the fullback, Thomas. Inside the 10. Brought down by Kalou. But Rocky, what exactly do you mean by leverage and open field tackle? Well, at first we'll see this the play right here, the, just a little flat route to the fullback Thomas who they like to get him the ball in the, in the flat like that but levers look you got to if you're a cornerback you know if you come up to the outside you've got to know where your help is coming from the inside whether it's a linebacker or a safety if you get a little too nosy you try to make a play that's where those big gashes can come they top of the screen to the left but they keep it on the ground Smith brought down by Josh Banderas playing his first game since the Miami game Junior linebacker out of Lincoln has been banged up. Yeah, they're sure happy to have Josh Banderas back. Uh, you know, his leadership, and he's hoping, or they're all hoping he can pick up where he left off. He had a great Miami game. He's been injured a little bit. This week practiced and was able to go. Now first and goal from the seven. Bottom of your screen to the right. Now in motion. Back to the reverse. He's got a blocker. Another stutter step move, and this time it results in a touchdown. The exact same play they ran earlier works again. Well, they line up most of their personnel on the right and then just bring everybody back across the field to the left. It's all about, in this case, offensive leverage. As you said, they ran this play earlier, but this time they get the benefit of having the fullback out in front with a nice block, just give him a little bit more room for May to get in the end zone. Nick Hart, number 45, leading the way. And Santosa with the extra point. So Minnesota with the drive it needed. 76 yards and eight plays, two of them by number one, K.J. May finds the end zone. Minnesota down by three. Rockies adopted team, the Ohio State Buckeyes, coming up later tonight on ABC at home against Penn State. And Santoso on the kick. Nelson and Mosley back to receive for Nebraska. with time down the sideline 
complete. Brandon Riley out muscles Myrick and makes the grab. And Riley is known for his speed. He's probably the fastest wide receiver to have, but the best thing he does here, he fights for the ball in the air. Look, it's not always going to be easy to make a catch out there. Sometimes you got to go up and get his pretty nice coverage, but Riley just fights back, comes back to the football, and out jumps Myrick to get it. 35 yards on the play, sets it up at the Minnesota 41. Zippo in the backfield, gets it here. Maybe the yard. They like what they've seen from the freshman out of Texas. Power back, change of pace kind of guy. Yeah, it really is. They, they got, they, as you said, they're kind of a running back by committee approach. They like Nubia a lot, but the freshman is Zigba doing a good job. You also see Imani Cross. He's more of the bigger back. Zigba had 70 yards and a touchdown on seven carries against Illinois. He stays out there for second and nine. Four wide receivers. Over the middle, complete. Westerkamp for a first down. Eric Murray in coverage, but an 11-yard pickup for the junior out of Chicago. Westerkamp again, that's his go-to guy. They're, they're roommates, been roommates for about three or four, four years here. But just a nice job with the stem and then the skinny post to the inside, and Armstrong puts the ball in the money. Now from the Minnesota 29. Hand off to Zigba. Falls forward for an extra yard. Pick up a two. Cochran with the tackle. Celestine in on the play as well. Two and are starting to chip away a little bit at this defensive rim front. We talked about Steven Richardson, big number 96 in there from Minnesota. hoping you wouldn't be absolutely that play looked like N Nebraska in 1995 you know with the fullback little guard pull right up the middle again this, this system that they run here it's based a lot on the pass and timing and all that but the Cornhusker way is to run the football that's what the fan base wants they're doing a decent job here so far today so third and two Carter they had lined up as the fullback now they changed the formation with Amani Cross and Janovich and Armstrong. He's going to keep it himself. He gets the first down. Run down by Celestine. And you think that was a design run, or did he make up his mind not to throw? Now, it looked like he had the fullback in the flat, but the problem was Antonio Johnson, the safety, goes and covers up Amani Cross. So smartly, Armstrong just pulls the ball down. And that's what's so hard. Again, those dual threat quarterbacks you go you, you stay on your guy you cover him and then the quarterback beats you with a run you come off and then they dump it to him makes it tough Armstrong able to get his shoe back on so first and ten from the 14 back to the eye formation and Newby back on the field but they give it to the fullback Janovich gets inside the 10 Janovich had that 55 yard touchdown run and it's really been amazing right we talked about it six yards in his career before that Southern Miss game and in the last three games, 174 yards on 19 carries. The bulldozer. He is, and Riley's told us, he said he's one of our best all-around football players on this team. He's their best special teams player, and now he's doing a great job not only blocking, but also carrying the rock. Five yards on that play. Second and five from the nine. There's Newby, finds the alley, gets outside, and will score again. Terrell Newby, his second touchdown of the ball game, 69 yards, now nine yards. What an excellent job by Newby on that play. The play was designed to go to the right. I don't know how he saw, he used that great vision he had, saw a little bit of daylight off to the left. We'll get a look at the replay. They hand him the ball, supposed to go to the right. He just sticks his right foot in the ground and somehow sees that space off to the left, takes it all the way to the house. Two Gophers going for him, bumped into each other. So now Drew Brown off the air. Another extra point. 
And Nebraska answers. So a strong first half for Terrell Newby, Tommy Armstrong, and the Nebraska offense. They lead by 10. We'll hear from Jane Slater with Coach Riley coming up on the Dave and Buster's halftime report. It's 24-14 at the half. Now let's go to Chris Cotter in the studio. Coach, you head into the half with a 10-point lead. How do you sustain it heading into the next half? Well, I think we've got to still have really good balance. We've had good balance offensively in the first half. We made some plays both ways, so we have to really keep attacking because we've had a hard time at times stopping them. So this is a time to put, put everything, put our pedal to the metal, so to speak. Let's see what you've got. Appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Nebraska hoping to avoid its first three-game losing streak to Minnesota since 1954. More importantly, looking to pick up Big Ten win number one on the season. The Huskers lead the Gophers 24 to 14 after the first half. Welcome back to Minnesota. Eamon McEnany along with Rocky Boyman. Jane Slater down on the field. But Rocky, we talked about how important this game was for Nebraska and certainly the Cornhuskers played with a sense of urgency. Yeah, this Mike Riley error did not get off to the right foot here. And this fan base desperately wants a win here. And I think they need, I know it's only off October and it's pretty early in the season, but this team needs to win, especially considering their schedule coming down the rest of the year. Time now to take a look at the first half lights in Rocky. Both offenses executing at a high level. Yeah, the offenses came to play today for sure. This is Leidner getting Minnesota on the board early in the fourth, first quarter, something they've not done yet this entire year. But my, uh, Tommy Armstrong Jr. making play today, this time out of the backfield, extending that play, creating on the run a little bit. And Newby has been strong here with the Nebraska run game. This was an early first quarter, 97-yard touchdown, 97 yards on the day, excuse me. They've done it through the air. They've done it on the ground. And you're later on on the ground as well, punching in for the touchdown. You get the feeling that Nebraska thinks they have to outscore these teams a little bit, especially considering where their secondary has played this year. And again, doing a good job against the run minnesota was able to run up and down the field a week ago against purdue but they knew it would be tough sledding against this nebraska front seven so nebraska decided to take a knee and run out the clock at the end of the first half they will get it to start the third santosa will kick for michigan nelson and mosley back to receive for nebraska Goes deep into the end zone for a touchback. So the Cornhuskers will start on the 25, but now let's check in with Jane Slater down on the field. Hey guys, well I checked in with Jerry Killer. You know, I was wondering why we haven't seen much of Shannon Brooks. Last week against Purdue, he had 17 carries for 176 yards. And of course, that crazy third quarter 71-yard run. He said there's nothing there after that fumble. He didn't bench him or anything like that because of it. We'll probably see more of him. It was just Rodney Smith has been doing a good job against this defense. He said the one thing he did tell his team is, look, we've had an offensive rhythm. We're going to keep that going, but we've really got to get some stops here in the second half. Guys, back to you. All right, Jane, trips to the left. Wester camp back out there. Newby in the backfield, first and 20 from the 24. Over the middle to Pearson L. Across the 35, Antonio Johnson with the tackle. And I really feel like Armstrong is getting in a rhythm. He looks comfortable back there. Again, we talked at the beginning of the game. They're simplifying this game plan. And what you do when you, when you simplify a game plan, you take all the, the things you have to practice and you wind up working on the things you're good at, really doing a good job of finding these little in, you know, inside slant routes. That one goes to DeVorne Pearson now. He's also hit Western Camp on. Doing a good job of that. So Danny Lansdorf told us this week, we need to find him completions. We need to heat him up. He's locked in right now on this drive. He finds Moore again. So Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Moore winning that bot battle with Eric Murray right now. 22-yard pickup. And Armstrong had done fairly well at the beginning of the year, but the last two games he's been off. Again, as we talked about, 35% completion percentage the last two ball games. But you get the sense he's comfortable now, getting into a rhythm, as you said, getting heated up here. Now he can take that momentum and keep going on the drive here. Eric Murray a week ago held D'Angelo Yancey to, without a catch, but having his hands full with Alonzo Moore. Now Armstrong on the keeper. Gets a block, breaks a tackle inside the 30. Pushed out of bounds by Celestine. But a great decision by Armstrong to hold on to it. He picks up 25. Yeah, he's so dangerous again as we've talked about him creating with his legs. Play looks to be pretty much dead, but then, you know, he breaks tackles. He's good in the open field. 
Not exactly is how Mike Riley's used to having this kind of quarterback, but he's playing well. Good block by Sam Cotton. Eighth play of the drive that started on the one. Swing it out to Western King. Gets by Johnson. He's hit up. Knocked out of bounds by Myrick, but not after he picks up the first down. And it's good they're getting Westerkamp invo back involved in the game. He just has three catches the last two games. He's been the go-to guy. So far, he's done a good job. That ball just barely gets over the fingertips of the defender. But again, when, when a quarterback has rapport with a wide receiver, they get in rhythm, and that's the guy, Westerkamp and Armstrong, and they've got the connection. First and goal from the nine on a drive that started on the Nebraska one. Minnesota bringing pressure off the edge. And they get to Newby behind the line of scrimmage up the middle. Scott Ekbe in on the play. Hendrick Ekbe as well. This defense knows they have got to get short up and at least just try to get a field goal forced here before this game gets, gets out of hand. Westerkamp at Pearsonell to the right. Stanley Morgan Jr. to the left. Off the play fake. They have Carter open. He reaches for the pylon. Inside the one they mark it. Carter wants a touchdown. Will we take another look upstairs? And that's a nice play because We've seen that action before of them bringing the the, the Mornay personnel around. Let's get a look and see if he got in. The Nebraska fans that have made the trip want that to go upstairs and be looked at. It looked like it hit the pylon. See his hands down. That doesn't matter. Yeah. But does that ball Review. break the play there before the right knee hits? Let's see if this one gives us a better angle. It'll go upstairs to Steve Newman. Replay official take his first review of the game. Ball hit the goal line before the runner was down, resulting in a touchdown. Please reset the game clock to 425. 425. So Seaton Carter gets his first touchdown of the season, and Jerry Kill's deficit becomes even larger. So what a drive for Mike Riley in this offense, Tommy Armstrong Jr. From basically inside their own one, they go 99 yards plus. Take a commanding lead on the road against the four and two Gophers. Drew Brown drills home the extra point. And you talk about a quarterback trying to find his rhythm. Tommy Armstrong Jr. finding Seathan Carter. And the Cornhuskers are in control. Up 31 14 on the road as they get the review. 31 14. Does that change the offensive game plan for Leidner and the Gophers? Myrick from the four. Sets up his blocks. Gets out to the 30. So good field position for the Gophers down by 17. Let's send it down to Jane for some news off the field concerning Minnesota football. Well, well, guys, it does look like things are going right for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, which is important for them because so many things have gone wrong for them this season. All four of the Cornhuskers' losses have come in the last minute or in the overtime of the game. Well, that could be deflating and divisive for a program that has five national titles and over 800 wins. Riley told me ahead of this one, it hasn't gotten the team down. He pointed to Sunday, the day after the 23-21 loss to Wisconsin. He had more than 50 players show up for voluntary lifting. He said it basically showed that this team was still engaged and they still bought into the program and it's showing here today as they have the 17 point lead guys pressure, back to you pressure up the middle thanks Jane it almost leads to a disastrous play it's Cockrell didn't know to go for the tackle or the interception and, and that's the thing you know Jane was talking about you, you always want to re read the body language of the players and are they are they showing up late to things are they you know are they hanging their head a little bit but uh, according to Mike Riley and folks this team is not that way at all they're showing up the voluntary lifts they're still energized and they still feel good about this program Brooks in the backfield. 
Gets it on second and ten. And short gain is set up third and long. But it's one thing to be two and four. It's when all four are demoralizing losses coming on the last play that the opponents had the ball. Yeah, the BYU game was kind of a fluke. It's a Hail Mary at the end of the game. But then after that, there was you know a variety of things. Some clock management issues. Some guys not playing the right technique. And, and they kind of feel snake bitten. But, uh, you know, it, it's certainly, you know, winning obviously makes a difference. You play that whole game and really just the result is a loss. It's still tough to swallow. So now third and six. Pump, pressure coming off the edge, and he will get dropped. Somehow he held on to the ball, but Jack Genguish hammers him to the turf. Vincent Valentine as well. Well, and Amy, we talked about the deep, the offensive line for Minnesota is so banged up. They got a bunch of different guys in there. Nebraska brings a little bit of pressure. This time it's a twist stunt. And Vincent Valentine comes from the outside. Lighter's trying to get some time to let those routes develop down the field, but just not enough time as Valentine gets to him. McMullen in on the play, but a couple of guys from Nebraska playing banged up. Gangwish and Valentine bringing the heat. Low kick, Pearson Hill makes the grab. Looking to set up a block, now he's gonna change direction. A lot of running around to get out across the 40, which is where Nebraska will take over when we return. Nebraska with the ball and in control. Will Mitch Leidner be able to finish this ball game for Minnesota? Back after this. Up by three possessions. They come out with the eye. Formation Janovich and Newby. They run the reverse to Moore. It's a block on the edge, gets by one tackler and gets out near midfield. Run down by Ekbe. And again, it hasn't been that complex of, of, of an offensive game plan. It's been a lot of those jet sweeps like we just saw there. Some inside runs and a little bit of play action and maybe getting Armstrong outside the pocket, but nothing too crazy. Minnesota offense needs to get going while the Nebraska offense in both halves executing at a high level. Second and two now from the 49. Off the play fit. Deep down the middle into double coverage. And there's a flag. Johnson never turned around and he held up more. Underthrown ball, which worked against Johnson. Well, he, Armstrong got some pressure at his feet right as he was getting ready to lay into that ball. Get a shot of the pocket. Pass Initially, Defense, he 11, had a decent pocket. But this, penalty, automatic first down. this route is so far down the field, it looked like he couldn't really drive into that throw. A little bit of contact there. And Selling the flag while going down. That's a, you got, They got to work at that at training camp they gotta, <laughs> or wide receiver camp. You, you got to sell it. Yeah, you, you got to be a good actor at times. And, Minnesota fans were used to seeing Chris Carter do that's that. That's right. That's exactly right. But, you know, <laughs> that's a tough spot for Johnson on the under throw with Moore going back for it. So they mark it at the 36. There's Janovich. Overpowering Andre Campbell. Who's been quiet. You know, some of these guys who had big games a week ago against Purdue, Campbell, Richardson. We haven't really heard from him. I'm saying Steven Richardson, you just mentioned it. He's a guy that's, you know, really makes a lot of plays and is a disruptor out there. Really hasn't been much of a factor in today's game. Campbell last week, seven tackles and interception. Richardson, four tackles and a sack. Nebraska on the move again. Lead over the middle. Jordan Westerkamp. Brought down by Johnson. So after being taken away by the last two Big Ten opponents, Westerkamp being able to be a factor here today. And that was a good job there by Tommy Armstrong. He sees the wide receiver open, bang, pulls the trigger, doesn't hesitate, hits the open guy when he has the space. So, so much for me saying they're going to load up on the running game on this drive. Now newbie in the backfield. 40 seconds left in the quarter. Armstrong keeping it. Cannot get away. Jonathan Celestine. Yard gain. 
do not have to run a play here in, in the final seconds of the third. Mike Riley says, let's go to the other end. And let's try to finish. Up by 17, they have dominated the third quarter here on the road. Now they just have to finish the final 15 minutes of regulation. Nebraska with a second and nine from the Minnesota 18 to start the fourth quarter. They made the trip from Nebraska, and so far they're very happy they did. The Cornhuskers in control after three. If showing up to lift on Sunday is a sign of engagement, what's jumping up and down and dancing after three quarters of play? Look, sign yeah, up. they need some juice here. That's one thing they've not done this year is finish. I think they want to get that crowd hyped up here and get their teammate going. The Minnesota fans and the mascot still fired up, trying to inspire the Gophers to come up with a stop here and start the comeback. And again, what an atmosphere for college football. Great crowd on hand. Plenty of Nebraska fans making the trip, maybe sticking around to see the Chiefs and the Vikings play tomorrow, but those in maroon and gold need a stop. They need a stop and they need a turnover. Newby in the backfield on second and nine from the 18. Now Riley in motion. Armstrong's going to keep it himself. Tripped up at the 15 by Eric Murray. So that'll set up third and medium and now rocky this is when head coaches and offense coordinators earn their money you're in control up by 17. do you play for the field goal I, I think you play for the field goal right here you're already up 17 with a chance to go up 20. i, I think you do you play conservative run the clock here and the main thing you do is you tell your team look hold on to the football the really the only thing that can get minnesota back in this game is a turnover third and five does armstrong keep it pumps once flag on the play tip caught De Mornay Pearsonell, if it stands. He tipped it to himself, and it'll stand. Personal foul against the Gophers, and a top 10 nominee play delivered by De Mornay Pearsonell. Defense number 55. The result of the play is a touchdown. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And this is one of those plays where the coach goes, no, 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 yes. De Mornay Pearson, now those two Minnesota Gophers around that, that's not a ball you probably should have thrown, but a great job of concentration by the playmaker De Mornay Pearson, now. And that's not exactly Harold Carmichael going up to get it. He's 5'9". <laughs> I mean. Well, and, and Brian Bodie Calhoun's a great cornerback. You know, they got some good players in that secondary. That's a heck of a catch. Brown with the extra point. So a top 10 nominee, more importantly for Nebraska, Possibly the dagger. 21 unanswered points from the Cornhuskers. It's 155 left. They've been waiting for DeMornay Pearson L to get used to this offense, and he's just made it 38 14 with a tremendous catch. And I can't believe he threw this ball and even called the play. There's double coverage. Throws into two very good defensive backs, but just look, it's the concentration by an athletic guy like DeMornay Pearson L. Doesn't give up on the play, pulls it down. He's now very much a part of this offense. Tommy Armstrong now nine for nine in this half. Two touchdowns, 108 yards, but number 15 bailed him out on that one. Now May from the nine. Across the 20. Brought down hard at the 25. Third and 10. With time, has a man open. And that stops that streak as K.J. May makes the sliding catch. 13-yard pickup. Again, scoring fast is just not something that's really in the identity of Minnesota. They're used to controlling the game on the ground, controlling the clock, keeping it close, and being able to hang in there. But uh, it's certainly a tough task for this offense. When you look at the number of the wide receivers outside of K.J. May, you wonder who the deep threat is once they look for that quick strike. sideline instead and incomplete now, I know it's easier up here but Brandon Lingen looked wide open down the middle of the field yeah he was certainly wide open if, if Leidner would have the time we'll see Brandon Lingen release here and go really just straight down the middle of the field 
just a little bit of pressure, certainly not enough, but I think he was fixed in on the wide, wide receiver there and didn't find Lincoln at all. Looking for Still, the freshman. So now second and ten. Two backs, Thomas and Smith. Take the reverse to Carter, throw it back to Lingen. He's a block, and he gets it into Minnesota, into Nebraska territory, down to the 36. Myerson Cockrell brings him down, but a good block on the perimeter springs the tight end for 26 yards. That was a great job of misdirection. Everyone's eyeballs are going to the top of the screen there, and they make the tight end out late. You get the, the ball in the hands of the six foot five, 247 pound Lingen. And it's a wonder why they're still huddling at this point. I get it. They're a huddling team, but you're down a bunch of points here. you got to start putting some plays together and get, get some points on the board. Stack the receivers to the right. On the rollout. And he makes the grab and goes out of bounds. All right, Rock, you played linebacker. How does the play fake work when everyone in the stadium knows they have to throw? Well, that, that's the thing is Nebraska's secondary and their linebackers got to be smart. And know that to get back into this game, they have to put the ball in the air. There's no reason to suck up on that play fake. The Gophers are in the red zone. But they now with nine catches. But to your point about the huddle, you're yeah, losing precious seconds every time. High formation, they in motion. Minnesota. 19 yards. His third touchdown catch of the season. Finally, some efficient offensive play by Minnesota. Here's a look here. We'll see if he got in. They run the, the streak up and then the seven route. Close. Look like the See the ball broke the plane before he went out of bounds. After review, the runner was out of bounds before breaking the plane of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the one foot line. Will be first down and goal. Please reset the game clock to 12:05. I mean, you can see where they would call that, but I thought the fact that they had originally called it a touchdown, there wasn't quite enough evidence, wasn't that perfect camera angle to see. Obviously, they felt differently. Well, not only take a touchdown away from the career statistics of Brandon Lingen, but take up some time here because it'll be first and goal inside the one. Rodney Smith in the backfield. They try the sneak. No signal yet. Now it's a touchdown. So it cost them about 10 seconds, but they get the six points back. He said it cost them a little bit of time, but finally they get it in the end zone. Big body, big body Mitch Leidner takes himself. They're going to keep the offense out there and go for two. Down by 18, get it to 16, and then you can tie it up with two touchdowns and two two point conversions. Certainly a lot of good things got to happen here for Minnesota to get back in, but a lot of bodies. But he certainly broke the plane. You know, is, is it a question of his knee being down, but obviously not. Right, here comes the two-point conversion with 11.52 left to play in regulation. There we see Lincoln in the slot. He's usually the guy down here. May in motion. Looking for May, and they get the two. So it is indeed a two possession game as May beat Cockrell. Makes the grab. So there is life in the Gophers. Lingen doesn't get the six, but the quarterback does on the sneak. The Gophers down by two after the two-point conversion. Down by two possessions. 
So they kick it away deep. And Mosley brings it out. And he gets out to the 15. High formation. This is Newby. He has an alley. Gets across the 20, across the 25, out across the 30. So Eric Murray finally brings him down, but not after he rumbles for 16. And they just keep it moving. The last two possessions before that play, they gained 158 yards and two touchdowns, and they're on the move again. Yeah, and I would think they're going to keep the ball on the ground here, keep chewing up that clock, keep sticking the ball to Terrell Newby. to play fake. Looking for more. All right, we're now both 0 for 1 when we said they're going to yeah. run the ball and yeah. throw deep. Now well, they set up the screen, and Newby drops it. Talk about Eli Manning. Last year, Danny Langsdorf worked with the Giants. He's on the Giants staff. He's the quarterback coach for Eli Manning. You know, you see Eli Manning in the second year of Ben McAdoo's offense, how much more comfortable and in a rhythm he is, and that's what they're hoping happens here in the second half of this season with Armstrong. Yeah, and Langsdorf had his work, has had his work cut out for him here, getting this quarterback to adapt to a new system, the entire offense as well. Such a rhythm passing game. It's taken a while, but today is like their best performance of the year so far. Although very surprised they've thrown it on back-to-back -back plays and make that three plays. And another incompletion. Looking for Seathen Carter. I, I gotta say, that was a head-scratching series there. I, I don't understand it, it at all. You go with a bomb down the sideline, and then, you know, an another pass there goes behind Seathen Carter. Don't quite get that one. They could have chewed up another couple minutes off that clock there. After the big run by Newby, you thought for sure they were just gonna load it up, but Minnesota's gonna get it back with 10.58 now on the clock. Harden back at about the 23. but short. Harden runs out of bounds, making the grab. Nebraska fans that have hung around here, you wonder if they start to get nervous. Certainly, as you mentioned, a, <laughs> a lot of good things still need to happen for Minnesota, but... Well, it's 16 points, but it'd be a different story if Nebraska was able to get a couple minutes off that clock. It's still just under 11 minutes. Oh, Brooks almost went. Kalu with a touchdown-saving tackle. Images of last week against Purdue. And remember, Brooks was the spark last week, and he's trying to get something going here in the fourth quarter, breaking tackles because he was just a shoelace away from breaking that one. Pumps, here comes pressure, hit as he throws. Carter makes the grab. Eric Carter out jumped Jonathan Rose and high pointed the ball for a 29 yard pickup. And they got a little bit of pressure on Leiter. Did a good job hanging the pop over there. You see the pump fake. But remember, we talked about it. It's been a little bit while, but this secondary for Nebraska has been suspect all year. Nice job going up and pulling down a big catch. Leidner's now hit his last seven pass attempts. First and 10 from the 16. High formation. Now they load up to the left. May all by himself to the right. Now Lingen moves over. Into the end zone for Ling and he overshoots him. Nate Gary with the coverage. And he had Lingen open. I think a nice throw would have connected for a touchdown. So that stops the clock with 8-12 to go. He's a seven route. A nice throw put. I mean, if he hits Lingen in stride, that's a touchdown. Because the safety was a a little bit behind the tight end on that play. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Bunch set to the right, May to the left. That's where Leidner's looking. Knocked away at the last second by Rose. That was a good job of Rose just hanging with the play. Looked like that May was going to come down with the catch, but you see the right arm. Jonathan Rose at the last second just making sure that ball doesn't get pulled down for a touchdown. It's a tough play because his back was turned to the quarterback. He didn't know when it was coming, but he reacted well when May's hands went up, Rose's right arm went up, knocked the ball away. Third and ten. 
Carter, bottom of your screen left. Wagner forced out of the pocket. He could run. He decides to run. He gets hammered. So it'll be fourth and long. Josh Banderas returning to the field for the first time since the Miami game. Stopped him in his tracks. Fourth and 15. And they're going to go for the field goal. Two timeouts left, Rockies. Seven minutes. I don't know. I think that's kind of tough. Down 16 points go to go for a field goal here. 38-yarder. Kick is good. So it's still a two possession game between Nebraska and Minnesota. So they decide to go for three instead of fourth and 15. So now Mike Riley has keeps his hands team out there. Obviously, as Minnesota was showing onside kick. And the formation doesn't look any different than before the timeout. We'll see where he positions the ball. Westerkamp, the only Cornhusker back. They have eight up front, then two. And now they're changing sides. The ball is flat on the tee, usually a spin kind of now situation. Now they change kickers. All for naught. Newby continues his big day. Nebraska looking to salt this one away. They go to Newby right up the middle. And obviously the unsportsmanlike conduct for the, the interference on the sideline will move Nebraska back 15 yards, which certainly helps Minnesota's defense. Yeah, Minnesota with two timeouts, going to hold on to them as long as they can here. Mike Riley looks like having a hard time seeing the clock and the play clock. Looking right back into the sun. Five on the play clock. Right back up the middle. Monty Cross driven back. Under six to play. Minnesota fans starting to make some noise. Third down, Mike Riley was willing to throw it on the last possession. And again, game management. This was what hurt him against Illinois. They couldn't run out the clock against Wisconsin. Certainly is the last drive, putting the ball in the air three times. Doesn't help them here. We'll see if they keep it on the ground. Four wide receivers on third and six. Armstrong looking to throw, looking for Westerkamp. What a big time catch by Jordan Westerkamp. Eric Murray all over him. 27 yards. And I'm shocked by that call, but Westerkamp makes the play. Absolutely shocked. You go to your best wide receiver, but he's covered by the best cover guy for Minnesota. Just a great job of finding the ball in the air. The pocket for Tommy Armstrong was pretty good. And able to get that throw off, he's, uh, he sees that he connected with his wide receiver. Shocked by the call, but it, but it worked. Westerkamp with his sixth catch now has 76 yards and now they go I formation under five minutes to play. Janovich runs right into Jack Lynn. One yard pickup. Now does Jerry Kill have to start burning timeouts. And he needs the ball back twice. Yeah, he, they're down two scores here and a couple uh, onside kicks. So he's got to. Got to certainly got to get the ball, but he wants to hold on to him as long as he can. Point, that clock is tick tick ticking away and obviously Nebraska here is going to try to not snap the ball until it gets below five seconds. Nebraska 204 yards total on the ground. Newby doing most of the bit damage. Now Armstrong's going to call his own number. Plows ahead for a short gain. Jack Lynn again on the tackle. And now Jerry Kill takes a timeout it looks like. With 3.53 left to go now third and five under four minutes to go again looking to throw and now he keeps 
So he doesn't get the first down. Jerry Kill is going to let the clock run. I guess I'm not sure why you call a timeout to play before and then you don't hear. He's still going to let some time eke off this clock. Save one for when he has the ball yeah. back. Nebraska, Fultz now decides to go back. Set up to hold. 41-yard kick for Brown. He's one for two today. So they're not going to get this off. They do. And it's good. Just in the nick of time, Mike Riley gets three more points. And now Minnesota's back to that same 16-point, two touchdown, two of two-point conversion. One two-point conversion away from time, but. Will be May. Gets out to the 20. Early in the year versus TCU, they were able to get a late drive to move down the field pretty quickly. They got to move fast now, though. That's out of bounds and incomplete, so that'll stop the clock. Looking for Lingen. the deep threat for Minnesota at this point. Two and a half to play. Here comes pressure. Carter make the grab. No, incomplete. Throw was behind him. We make the point, I and mean, that's kind of the problem with this offense. There is no real home run threat. K.J. Mays a nice wide receiver, but they don't really have that guy that can just take the top off of defense for a long one down the sideline. They're going to have to find it here with just under 2.30 left in this game. Wins to the left, May, top of your screen to the right. Now he goes in motion. Nebraska backs off the pressure. And that will be intercepted by Kalu. He could go. The 20, the 10, touchdown Nebraska. Pick six, Josh Kalu. The Cornhuskers are going to get Big Ten win number one. And I always think it's hard when you ask your quarterback to roll out away from his throwing arm because it's just so hard for him to get his shoulders squared around to make an accurate throw. You'll see, rolls out to his left. He's got to contort his shoulders all the way around and just makes a bad decision in the end there. There's Kalu underneath the wide receiver, does a nice job. And that's what Nebraska's defense did not do last week. They had their hands on about seven, eight footballs, weren't able to come up with a turnover. And today, finally, they come up with one, probably icing the game. His second pick of the season, he returns it 41 yards for the score. And there will be no heartbreak in Minnesota for Kalu and the Huskers. They'll stop the losing streak to Minnesota. More importantly, they're going to get their first conference win of the season and get some mojo. You know, a few minutes ago in the fourth quarter, it looked like Minnesota may finally get some momentum back on. But the Cornhuskers were able to shut the door on Myrick taking Antonio Johnson gets up to the 25. Fourth down. Another interception. Gary picks up his third on the season. And he points to the Cornhusker fans who made the trip and said, We're taking this one back to Lincoln. And obviously, Leidner in this situation, this point in the ball game has to force a throw. Gary comes down with it. Here we'll see if we'll get a look at it here. Again, really, I, mean, I look down the field, not a ton open there. You see three Cornhuskers around the wide receiver. He had enough time, but he had to force one. Nebraska made him pay. Minnesota can't stop the clock. Line up in the victory formation, and they'll enjoy this one after all the heartbreak 
in year one under Mike Riley. They get to go on the road and enjoy it, and then he, you see that. You talk about the leadership, the guys who have stuck together, that's it right there. That's one of the lead leaders of this team, Josh Banderas, who took the field hurt. And they'll get to enjoy the victory on the road. And remember, Jane reported earlier about how he talked to Mike Riley and his team, didn't give up. The guys were showing up the voluntary lifting sessions and weren't hanging their head, and they were showing up the meetings. They still believe in this program, and I think that was evident here today. So they will not have to run another play. He said it was like a broken record, getting tired of trying to figure out all these last-second losses, but they didn't have to worry about crunch time here on the road. A dominant second half by the Cornhuskers. They stopped the losing streak to Jerry Kill's Gophers. Mike Riley gets his first Big Ten win, 48-25, the final in Minnesota. Tommy Armstrong led the offense. The defense was solid. They win it by 23. Coming up next, college football scoreboard presented by Honda. For Rocky Boyman and Jane Slater and our entire crew, I'm Eamon McEnany saying so long from Minneapolis. Now here's Chris Cotter in the studio.